Oh, this is fun. We're all gonna discuss, dissect England's chances at the World Cup. I think we're just about able to do that between the five of us here. So let's start then with Harry Kane. He's on the plane, he's going to start. Who makes up the rest of the front three? In your opinions, obviously, this is open for discussion here. Not everyone's going to be right. Uh, who wants to kick off? Yeah, sure, I don't mind. I think it's, it's probably England's position of strength, that forward line. There's loads of good options. There's probably no really wrong answer in this. But I think you've got to start with Raheem Sterling. I think in the latest England squad, it goes for goals, Kane, Sterling. I think he's on about 19. And then it's Maguire on seven. So he has just been so consistent for England. Was awesome at Euro 2020 as well. And then on the left-hand side, I play Phil Foden. I think he's been probably Man City's second best attacker over the last couple of years after Kevin De Bruyne. And for me, he's just a quality player. So that'd be my dream lineup. Foden, Kane, Sterling. I think the one on the left's probably the only one that's really up for debate because Raheem Sterling starts, doesn't he? He's Gareth Southgate's man. He loves to start him in all the games. Like you say, Harry Kane through the middle. Raheem Sterling's going to start, I think. For me, Phil Foden, I, I agree on the left. I, I love the way that he can take a player on. I love that pace. I love that energy that he's got. So I think he's going to start on the left. So I agree with the front three, but I think definitely maybe it's just that left-hand side that's really up for debate. I mean, it's a form of loyalty thing, isn't it? Because, I mean, we know Sterling's been great for England over the past five, six years, but on Premier League form at the moment, Phil Foden's outperforming his, uh, his expected assists, his expected goals. You know, he really is the standout forward in the Premier League other than Erling Haaland, who sadly isn't <laughs> eligible for England, although yeah, it could have been. Um, <laughs> but I think Foden is very much a part of that City system, um, and he hasn't really done that well for England when he's been given a chance. And I really want him to, but whether he can actually fit into the system that, that Southgate plays remains to be seen. So I think Southgate's going to play it pretty safe. Not one mention for Mason Mount. Ooh. Honestly, I don't understand what he has to do to prove himself. I think England are far better with him in the team than him on the bench. I would start him from the left, Foden from the right, came through the middle. No, Sterling. No, Sterling. No, Sterling. He come off the bench. Sterling's starting though, isn't he? Mount has to start. He has to start. Well, if you're talking just... other options then, are you having a, a Jack Grealish in there? A Saka? I'll have them off the bench. Off the bench? I'll have them off the bench. Look, there, there's so many options, but Mason Mount gives you everything. I agree. He's a, he's a phenomenal <laughs> player, but it, I think it comes down to formation. Like, If you're playing a 4-3-3, I maybe think about having Mount in midfield, but if you're looking in a, in a back five formation and you're looking for a sort of inverted winger, I don't know whether that's Mount's, that's Mount's best position. Well, he's deployed from there for Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Mount is trusted in the two more forward inverted wingers. That role is his at Chelsea's. I mean, every manager that, that takes over a club where Mount plays loves Mason Mount. They immediately make him the fulcrum of the team. Um, and I think you're totally right. He's a great player. But... I just see Southgate going quite safe. He's got to go safe, hasn't he, at the moment. We'll get on to where we think they will finish or how far they'll go. But the first game, he's going to be safe. Yeah, he's going to go with the trusted spine of his team that we saw in the Euros, that he's stuck with that throughout. He's going to stick with them. And unfortunately he for you, Mason Mount, Mount is not one of those people. I guarantee you. He trusts Mount start. more than Foden. I that's agree, for sure. yeah. yeah. He does. Yeah. He's got a better he chance of starting Mount. than Foden, but I just would start Foden. I think his form this season has been better than Mount as well. Yeah. What's he on? Six goals and three assists in the Premier yeah, League. Mount's got that hat trick against Man United, which was a bit of a freak game. Man United were terrible that day. Uh, Foden's never really done it for England. Um, yeah. But then is that more of a Southgate issue? I'm not sure. I just think he's been so good in the Champions League over the last couple of years as well, Foden. I think he's, he's got to be the sort of player that we are building a, around over the next 10 years. Do you think it's going to be four at the back or do you think it's going to be three? I think it's probably going to be three, to be honest. Um, I think we're so weak at centre-back. We'll probably come on to this, but it's one of our weak positions. So do you strengthen your weakest position or do you try and you know, strengthen the midfield and the forward line because we don't have a good defence? It's a bit of a way up for him. I don't think there's any easy answer, really. As we're staying on kind of the front line here, if anything happens to Harry Kane, who's our best choice as a backup? I mean, well, I'll kick this one off, can I? Yeah, go for it. We've got Rashford or Ivan Tony, but I actually would love to give Ivan Tony a bit of a chance. Blank faces around here. No, I, 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 I agree. Like I think Marcus Rashford isn't a centre forward in the same way that Harry Kane is. So you're looking, Ivan Tony is in more of that mould. I've heard so many people say he should just be on the plane because he can take penalties. Yes. <laughs> but I think... We love him, but I know that. he's got a phenomenal record. I think he has he missed one in his professional mm. career. So he's got a phenomenal record, but that takes away from him as discrediting him as a player and mm. the way that he... I think they need someone who can hold up the play. I think he's strong through the middle. I think Marcus Rashford, for me, is 
be better off the side. Do you think so? Because I think yeah. this year he's been playing more centrally he and he's has looked been, back yeah. to his kind of old self. Yeah, he, I think he's got more confident playing through that central role for Manchester United because for years I think he's been trying to adapt and he's been shifted across the front three. But I, yeah, I definitely think Tony is a be better option to deputise for Kane in that role. I'm not saying Rashford shouldn't be in a squad or anything like that, but I think I'd yeah, put him out wide. Well, probably gives Rashford then more versatility, like we are saying, he might play in a different position and get more game time in that way. Yeah, I was just thinking on the Tony issue, for me, he'd be, he'd be miles away from my starting 11, to be honest. I think play, taking an uncapped player, you know, making him the backup to Harry Kane, that's a huge risk. For me, I'd have Tammy Abraham, I'd have Calvert-Lewin, um, I'd even have Callum Wilson ahead of, of Ivan Tony, to be honest. I think Callum Wilson's been really underrated this season. And Tammy Abraham. injuries with those kind of players true, that you're talking true, about True, true. But, I mean, Tammy Abraham's got a very good injury record. I think he was great at Chelsea, slightly misused in the latter days under Tuchel, and then went to Roma. I think he got 27 goals last year. He won the UEFA Conference League. He's been really, really yeah. great in, in a, a very intense club and an intense atmosphere. I think he's got that top-level experience. So, if Kane got injured, I'd actually turn to Tammy. Agreed. I would say the exact same. I think everyone else apart from Ivan Tony and, and Callum Wilson, are forwards, mm -hmm. but they're Rather not strikers. strikers. Mm -hmm. Tammy's a striker. He can't play off the wings. He has to play through the middle. That would be my go-to, providing... It's a four, three, three, or, or it's a front three rather than. Yeah. But there's room two. for Tony in the squad yeah, I mean, as, as, yeah. well, as well as Tammy Abraham. So I would. He'd third, it, I you'd put him on. You would take him. I mean, Surely. in a 26 man squad with five substitutes, if you're going to a penalty shootout, like you said, yeah. you're going to bring on Tony. And as a, as a lower league football fan, seeing someone come through, you know, from Peterborough up to the, to the Premier League, I that's good. Yeah. It's I know, good. He, us English love yeah. a he, heartwarming story like Tony that. Tony was never capped at any level of youth, you know, and he's, it would be straight in from nowhere, essentially. And I think that, you know, it's a kind of Steve Bull reboot, um, which we've been waiting for since 1990. So uh, bring it on. We didn't actually agree there, guys. I don't really know who was going to be Harry Kane's Me and Dan say number Tammy. two. Who was yours, Charlotte? I'm just going with Tony. But I think when <laughs> you were right in saying about the Nations League, Southgate could have used those games mm, yeah. to experiment a yeah. bit more, mm -hmm. give people opportunities who haven't had it, see how they were going to fit in. And he didn't do that. I think it just, if you look at the team against Germany, I think the la in the last game, I think that's probably what we're going to see. Obviously, Pickford would come in into that. But I think it gave an insight as to what he sees his strongest 11 as and the formation that he wants to play. And he wasn't involved at all, was he? So, yeah. But staying in on the front line, Jack Grealish, a player that just brings a whole load of different emotions to different people. Obviously, he's quite the character. Possibly hasn't had the, the best move as we'd expected from Villa to City. But still, you know, he's, he has developed as a player now in terms of maturity. Um, does he start? Does he go? He definitely, oh, he definitely goes. goes, yeah. Definitely goes. Um, he would be one of my first subs, attacking subs. Um, so he I doesn't think, start, he's just a sub. Yeah, no, well, he's not just a sub. <laughs> not just a sub, yeah, a very important, him, integral sub. Um, and he is who I would hate to play against as a right-back after already playing 70 minutes against either Mount or Sterling. Um, I think... <laughs> Mount again. Chelsea players, <laughs> of course. Um, I think Grealish is... I think it's been a good move. Uh, from Villa. I think I know people look mm. quite a lot at his, uh, at his stats, but I always go with the eye test as well. I think he's playing well, and Pep, there's an added pressure to never lose that ball. And mm. as a winger, a risk taking winger, to have to kind of hold that back a little bit, I think that that maybe took his numbers down a bit. But he's been playing very well. He would be one of the first subs if I was in need of a goal. And it's an interesting point you make about Pep because I think we've seen the reverse with Sterling since Sterling's moved to Chelsea. He's playing a bit more like he does for England, like dribbling with the ball more and you know being a bit more, having more freedom. I think Grealish is a better team player since he's gone to City by a long way, but maybe he's not doing the, as much kind of taking people on. But like you say, I think coming on as a sub, I'd like to see him a bit more central as well. Like at Villa, he did cut in a lot centrally and he can shoot as well. I think that's, you know, that's where he can really make an impact as well. So... Um, and, you know, for, for morale, 
and hair products. He's, he's vital. <laughs> For character, you have in yeah. Grealish in your squad. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy, clearly, and, and very popular with his teammates as well. And I think it's an interesting point what these guys have alluded to, that England play in a much more similar style to Aston Villa than we do Man City. Quite defensive, a lot of possessions at the middle third, counter-attacking, etc. And Grealish is great for getting the ball into the final third, where things happen. He's rarely the guy providing the final pass, but he's been so involved in a lot of Man City's play this year, just without probably having the output that he probably deserves on the basis of his play. So he'd be great off the bench for me. Final 20 minutes, people will be terrified. Yeah, he's a squad, he's, yeah, he's a squad, squad player, super sub, bring him off. We saw the impact he could have in the Euros as well. I think everyone was pining for him to be in the, every start in 11 then, weren't they? It'd be interesting to see if that starts the same, if they don't have the same impact when they kick off this World Cup. So I think, yeah, for me, super sub rather than a starter. Who's the back line? What's the back line going to look like? I mean, this is... We couldn't talk about this all day. We could start on the right first because there are, we've got so many good options. Yeah but so many injuries. Who starts in a, right in back a, if that's how we're going to play? I'm presuming it's going to be a back three. And if so, I would play Carl Walker as the right side of the back three. Mm -hmm. I know this is the point if where... If he's not injured. If he's not injured. If he's fit. Um, I would stick with Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire's name has been circulating this table for quite some time. I want a definite answer from all of you. Is he starting, yes or no? Not for me. Too big a risk. Not been playing regularly for Man United. I think he's been sort of slipped down the packing order. Lindelof's going ahead of him in, in terms of getting into that United lineup, making England errors as well. We saw it in that Germany game, those two errors. And it's just too big a risk. He's not playing for Man United. He's got fewer league minutes this season than Anthony Alanga, who's got so much more competition in his position. So Maguire for me, no. He starts, I think, definitely. Uh, he will be in the team, but... <laughs> I mean, unless I'm appointed an England manager. <laughs> I would start him. I think Southgate will start him. He's had stinkers at club level. We know that. But... He's had stinkers at he's, international Yeah, he's had a few stinkers <laughs> internationally <laughs> as well. He's also but, not really played for ages. <laughs> but I, I look at the alternatives, and I'm not sure if I trust them yet. I'm not sure if I trust Ben White to go to a World Cup and perform yet. I guess there's the argument there of saying, for example, Harry Maguire hasn't had much time for a club at the moment, but goes to country, he knows how to play in that team for his country. So technically should fit back in there and, and play well. That's obviously Gareth's mindset in this. Yeah, I mean, that's the logic. But like, in the most recent game against Germany, or mo the most recent game to when we filmed this, you know, he gave away two goals, really. Um, the second one, when he was trying to make this sort of marauding run down the left flank to make up for his earlier error, and it just compounded it even more. And he's never really made errors for England, but he started to creep into his game at that level as well. And he's not third choice at Man United, he's fourth choice as well. It's Lindelof who comes on in most of their games if there's a change or if Varane gets injured, which unfortunately for him is, is far too often. So I think this, this debate is really only about Maguire because a lot of people would be like, Sterling's not in great form but Sterling has to go and probably has to start. Maguire's the one where you might take him on the plane, but to start him when he's played so little would just be an enormous risk for me. Harry Maguire, I think, even though he is on a decline, can still pull something out for a big moment. And I think he's, he's one of the bigger personalities and I think they'll need him more than they think. Harry Maguire needs a good World Cup for his career full stop. Yeah. So if he goes and plays and starts... Providing then... he has either side of him two defenders that can do that job, and I mean press that ball and mm. make his life easier, which is why on the left-hand side of that three, I would have Tamori. Interesting um, as well. Because two he... pacey boys that even if Maguire does make a mistake, hopefully they're quick enough to get back in. But I think that would be my three. I think it would be balanced. I think what he needs, Harry Maguire, in the next... I think there's about six games he's got before, the, before they stop for the World Cup. Varane's injury obviously means he's got the possibility to play. Mm. He still might not. Mm. He needs good games because I think he needs that confidence. He's barely played at all this season. To go in, you're right in terms of he has always performed well for England. He was great at the Euros. I can understand. I do think that Southgate will start him. But to go in fresh off the back of barely playing at all this season into the World Cup with not much confidence. He had a great 2018 World Cup. Mm -hmm. Let's not beat around the bush. He was well. mm -hmm. not quite as good, but still grew, grew into it, I'd say. I mean, in, remember the last World Cup, his touch map for games. I actually mapped it against John Barnes in 1990. It was pretty much the same. He was attacking <laughs> so much up the, up the left-hand side, you know. Only one way to beat him, get around the back, etc. <laughs> but he's just not that player anymore. And I think it's nearly four and a half years since the last World Cup. And I just think it's too risky. Who's it's the too alternative? Risky. 
I mean, obviously John Stones is, you know, I think Kyle Walker's obviously the key, I would say he's almost at the key man in the whole squad. You know, he gives you that recovery that is so important and we don't know if he's going to be fit and that is a huge blow. Obviously, Reese James as well. You know, he can play both right wing back, right back and at a push right centre half. So Walker seemed confident. I think he gave an interview the other day. He yeah. seemed confident that he, he's he, an amazing healer. That he was yeah. <laughs> that yeah. should help him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's confident that he's going to be fine. So I think Southgate does need him on that side. Let's talk again about maybe does Eric Dyer, does Connor Cody, people that Sarkovsky. again are tried and tested and it, it comes back to Southgate likes them. He yeah. trusts them. They're yeah. big tournament players for England. I mean, Cody's always been sort of the England cheerleader. He's yeah, just yeah. gone along because he's a great guy. And, and people <laughs> love him in the dressing room. People just love him in the dressing room. We love room. great guys. Um, but yeah, I think, I think he'd deserve a call up, to be honest, on, on current form. Probably, I think we've seen in recent weeks with Christian Romero being injured at Spurs, like Eric Dyer's form has slightly dipped off at just the wrong time, which is a bit unfortunate for him. But I would probably go with Tamori in the back three, but Southgate won't. So I think we can kind of forget that, to be honest. You find that... Managers are quite judgmental over positions they played, I think. Yeah. Well, Southgate's kind of picky over centre-halves, I think, because he knows what he wants from one. And I think, yeah, unfortunately for Tomori, he doesn't seem... No. I mean, Chalabra at Chelsea, he's been playing really well recently. There's, we've got a lot of options, but... He's it does, loyal, though, isn't he, yeah. Southgate? But he's who would he's you loyal play? to his favourites. I, I, I think it will be Maguire, Stones, Walker, if Walker's fit. I would like to see Tomori, as I said, but I don't see that happening. I think Ben White really deserves a shout, to be honest. I think he has been playing at right back for Arsenal, but I think he's been one of the best right backs in the league, to be honest, especially with Rhys James being injured recently. He's made more progressive carries than any other right back this he's season. He's brilliant going forward. Like when, when they put him out there, I was like, oh, this is going to be. Nobody's you know. giving me answers. Who are your. Who's your <laughs> back three? <laughs> Ben White's in there for me. Ben White, Kyle Walker, Ben White, and Stones. And Stones. Stones, yeah. stones oh, in the middle. Whoa, Stones, is stones. Key, stones is the key, I think. Stones yeah. on the ball is phenomenal. I know he's had some issues with injury and he's got a lot of competition at Man City as well. But I think he is, in terms of talent, he is phenomenal, John Stones. I think he's I'll really, tell you really who good. the key man is, though. Kieran Trippier. About to move yeah. on. You've just <laughs> taken a roll there, Duncan. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm actually going to start the other side. Ben Chilwell or Luke Shaw? Luke Shaw for me, Luke to be Shaw. honest. I love Ben Chilwell, but he, he's not consistently playing for Chelsea. Luke Shaw was out of the side at the start of the season when Malassia was playing really well, but he's come back into the side and it looks like he's given him that boost because he's actually got some competition at Man United for that left-back slot for the first time in ages. I'd probably start him over Ben Chilwell, but I think that's less of, a, that's less of an issue. I'm not too bothered, really. I think they're both great options. There's a lot of options there, obviously, right-back, as well the right-hand side. Um, Trent, does he... Go, get oh, on the plane. Such, what? so boring, this chat now, isn't mm. it? Isn't it? I just what feel do we do? like he doesn't particularly it's, like it anymore. It's just gone on and on and on and on, hasn't it? Like, he's very good at getting forward. And then when he scores for Liverpool or whips in a great cross, everyone's like, see, this is why he should yeah. be start starting. And it's like, that's not the point as to why he's not starting, is it? Well, the point with Trent is that he plays well for Liverpool because he's given licence to take incredible yeah. risks. And it's not his, you know, Klopp won't blame him if something bad happens. That's not Gareth Southgate's you know, blueprint. And it's so, not working for Liverpool this season either. No, and he, to be fair to Trent, he has played better as a sort of more defensive right-back in the last few games, but I just can't say, he won't get into that team unless, unless, you know, injury or desperation arises. Trippier, in the last two tournaments, so the World Cup and the Euros, only Kevin De Bruyne has created more chances than, than Trippier. Um, you know, he is a, just a phenomenally good both set-piece and open-play um, deliverer. Um, and you've seen what he's done with, with Newcastle. He's already, like, their main man. He's the sort of... Yeah, he's a massively underrated player, I think. As you might have guessed, I would go <laughs> with Ben Chilwell on, I on the I, left. I did guess that. I think he's being rotated. It's not dropped. He's, he's getting regular matches. Um, but we have, to, we have to manage the load. We play a lot of games. Mm. And I would honestly rush Rhys James back. What, I'll find a way. You can't rush a <laughs> player back. <laughs> To I'd a World him back. Cup, though, when they haven't played, they haven't got any minutes under well, the belt, there's no fitness. Well, he's supposed to be an incredible healer as well. As well? Oh, there's a lot of them. In so, I think Reese James is the answer. And I'm, I'm being optimistic, obviously, we're a few weeks out. I'm being optimistic that he makes the plane. We obviously know kind of the midfield, that's done and dusted. So, I want to ask you guys, who is going regardless playing starting for you top three people you would have on your team sheet Ooh, the three i have you? the three, the three, I three have you to want have. with no exception i have to have mason mount in that team i have to have harry kane if he was available and fit bring reese james is gareth picking those three no duncan gareth southgate who's he gonna pick 
Well, he's going to pick Sterling, Kane, the usuals, Maguire. That's going to happen. But I would say my non-negotiables would be Foden, Bellingham and Pickford. Pickford, obviously. Mm. That's kind of a... Kind of an easier one. No, well, I think that is. He's only been playing other players. But a lot of fans don't get why he right. picks Pickford. Yeah. And I think we kind of need, need to reiterate why he does. Pickford, you know, has been in great form for England. Everyone knows that. But he's also been in great form for Everton. He kind of kept Everton up last year. Um, in terms of goals prevented on XG, he's up there again this season. His distribution is amazing. We saw, no offence to Nick Pope, we saw his distribution against Germany. He, he looked panicked at times. The ball was going back and, you know, he's a great st shot stopper. But... Um, and I think some people quite are sort of still seeing Pickford as this kind of like, you know, slight banter figure from, uh, from previous seasons. And he really isn't. He is an absolutely integral part of the, of the team. But you mentioned, obviously, Jude Bellingham. I think he's going to be so exciting to watch this yeah. year at the World Cup. Just how much he's improved of late and what Dortmund fans are, are talking about him. You know, he is their new Erling Haaland, obviously. And, you know, eight goals already so far, I think... Uh, the papers have been hailing him as the next big thing. He's obviously, you know, going forward a bit more now, which is exciting. He's definitely on Gareth's sheet. Yeah, I think genuinely he's got to be one, if not the first name that you put on that. I think you've seen the, the tone around him change over the season. It was like, is he going to go? Is he going to make the squad to now? That's not even the debate anymore. The debate mm. is, does he start? And yes, is the answer. He has to start. Do you remember when Birmingham retired his squad number? And yeah. I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. It's amazing. And now I'm like, to be honest, lads, you should have done it soon. There's only three teenagers in Champions League history that have scored in four consecutive games. Kylian Mbappe, Erling Haaland and Jude Bellingham. Yeah. And that's the, that's the sort of company he's in. And he doesn't even play up front. So. Always always steps up on the biggest occasions as well. He gets slightly frustrated, you feel, like in the Bundesliga sometimes with Dortmund's inconsistency. But in the Champions League for the last two seasons, he's been phenomenal. And as Duncan said, I think it's four goals this year. That's the most by an Englishman in the Champions League. He's captain Dortmund. I thought when he went to Dortmund, I was like, oh, it's going to be six months, a year. He'll ease in. No. He was captain within like 18 but months. He's 19 still, and I don't know what you were like when you were 19, but I wasn't talking with confidence. Like, I mean, he literally is like a. I'm getting so angry with my teammates as well. Yeah. He tells them. I exactly wasn't playing what the Champions League either. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he's so. He's a leader, and you know, already you can see in the England team, everyone, you know, against uh, Germany in, that, in the last game, he, he led pretty much every category in yeah. the game. He, he was amazing in that match, and yeah, he, I think he's the. For, for fans from other countries who maybe haven't been keeping a close eye on England, I think he's the player they're going to watch and go, whoa, yeah. mm. he's as good as... It's also well-timed as well in terms of his leadership because Jordan Henderson is dropping off in terms of his abilities. You know, it's just an age thing. He's been phenomenal for so long. But Drew Bellingham can be that new sort of leader in midfield alongside Rice, and I'm really excited about that duo. It's one player we haven't really spoken about that much. I think he was teased a little bit, possibly supporting Harry Kane. Saka, is he starting? Is he a fringe player? How are we factoring him into our team? He's a fringe player for me. Um, and I like him and I think he's effective, but I can't see how he starts. I think he comes off the bench, um, maybe when... Instead of Sterling? I think he Saka would come... Saka and Foden? I would bring on Saka for Foden. I think he's effective. I think he gives you, he gives you something different, but he wouldn't be the, the, the player that I start with. And to be fair, whilst everyone else really rants and raves about him, I'm looking at him, I'm just like, there's not something there that I haven't seen before. So I like him, but not enough for him to start. He's not better than Foden, is he? If no. we're being honest. Yeah. So I think when you're looking like for like, I don't think he would start Saka and Foden. I think he's going to start Sterling, isn't he? Regardless. So then it goes back to that one position that he's, that he's got to fill. And I think Saka's been playing well. I think he's in good form. Fair enough. Definitely deserves to go. I think he could make an impact, but I don't think, for me, he doesn't get in the starting eleven. So, spoken about players who are definitely making Southgate's 11, who is on the peripheries at the moment and maybe has still got time, is in the 55 man squad um, and still fancies his chances are going? I'm going with James Madison. I personally don't think that he's going to make it. I don't just, Southgate just doesn't fancy him at all. But if you look at the. Leicester have obviously had a really bad start to the season. He's been the standout player by them for a mile. His goal contributions in terms of goals scored, assists, even if you go back into the back end of last season, I think you're looking at Erling Haaland. So, um, obviously, he's an, on a different planet, isn't he? But you're t you've got to talk about him at the, t at the top of the talent of the Premier League. And he's just not getting a look in at all. So I would take him. I don't think he will go. But I definitely think, his f based on form, he deserves to be on the plane. And you don't think he'll go because he's just slightly out of favour 
with yeah, Southgate. He's just picking people he likes. Obviously, it, we know that he does. I think do it's that. 2019, the last time that he played for England, and I just think. Yeah, you're right in terms of he has his favourites and then there's people who can't get a look in. And at the moment, if James Madison can't get a look in in the form that he's shown this season, yeah, I know Leicester have had a really bad start to the season. They haven't been playing great, but him personally, he has played really well. So I just think if he can't get a look in now, then he's not really got a chance while Southgate's there. Yeah, it's just difficult because you're, it's at the expense of someone. Yeah, and I just feel like that, that will be Foden or Mount or Saka, someone like that, not making it. And he has been great this season, but he's a very streaky player. Um, he's always been like real flushes of amazing form, then a bit of a down period. But he probably on but form But if he's on this form be... now, then there's no know, suggestion that he's just going to well, drop off the end. The end argument is, I guess, that, that he's very much kind of individualistic player. You know, he yeah. does sort of do bits of magic, as you say, whereas Mason Mount is very much, managers yeah. love him. But I would argue that World Cups aren't really about teams in some respect. It often does come down to little magic moments because international teams aren't as you know, slick as club teams because they don't play with each other that much. So someone like Madison could make the difference. So, Doogie, I'm going to say, obviously, Charlotte's gone, um, James Madison. Who are you possibly going for? Uh, as my sort of bolter, um, I think Joe Gomez potentially has a chance of making the plane. Um, I know he was brilliant in that title winning season for Liverpool. I really thought this was gonna be the World Cup by now that he'd be established as one of Southgate's guys, but he's had those injury issues. But I think he, we showed, well, he showed in that game against Man City, against Erling Haaland, what he can do against really top opposition. He then did give away a penalty the following week <laughs> against West Ham, which wasn't great. But if we're talking about an unexpected player who could potentially make it, I think his versatility across that back three as well, he could be on the plane. We're talking about who could. Who's still got a shout, Duncan? Well, sticking with that side of Liverpool's pitch, I'd probably get Harvey Elliott. I mean, he's still a teenager. Um, he's been brilliant this season. And you only have to look at how much the other players are trusting him. Um, he's even scored with his right foot in the Champions League recently, which is no one ever thought would happen. So um, he just has that kind of a brilliance. And I think he is very much a system player. And I think he will be someone that Southgate rakes as well. So I think he's got a reasonable chance. What other Chelsea player hasn't quite <laughs> made the plane yet? I'm not sure. Uh, Ruben loftus cheek is not on the plane yet, uh, so I will pick him. But uh, I would probably go with my wild card as another Harvey, Harvey Barnes. Mm. Um, I think he is coming into good form. I think he was flying before his injury. Um, and I think he offers something a little bit, a little bit different, you know, whilst the rest of the front line and, and, and the players uh, in the wide areas try and trick their way past players, he just puts his foot down mm. and he, he's an aggressive runner and he will give you something a little bit um, more heavy metal uh, and, and just a, a different look to the team. The only other person we haven't really spoken about that much is probably Ben White, but we've got a lot of right back options. So it's probably just congesting that part of the pitch even more, but a little bit more of a versatile player if we're adding another no, I think he makes it. Person in the mix? Uh, yeah. I you think, think he makes it? I think Ben White makes it. Not even a fringe? Because of our, I guess, defensive fragility, you'll be looking at who can be consistent. I think he'll be in contention to start, I think. He can play defensive midfield at a push as well, which I think is another, another string to his bow. I mean, we probably don't Risky. need to get there, but <laughs> why not? Play a team of right back. He's probably rival for that. That spot is Mark Gehi, who's been in the last yeah, yeah. few squads as well. And, and Gehi's not been great this year for Crystal Palace. I think Anderson has been far out playing him. And, and Palace have had a bit of a weird season so far, considering how many people thought they'd go this year. So if it's Ben White versus Gehi, I think you go with White every time. I mean, if Southgate's uh, watching this, then we're just <laughs> we're putting constructing a whole new team for him anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, continuing, obviously, with, with Gareth, what are our thoughts on him picking players in form versus players who have done a job for him in the past and who he is loyal to. Well, he does because the latter, doesn't he? But what should it, he does do the latter. Should yeah. he be picking more players in form? It's hard because his, his form is what he sees when they perform for England, so he judges them off that. I know he goes and watches the games in the weeks, but he'll go back to the last Euros and be like, oh, I could rely on Harry Maguire, I could rely on Luke Shaw. And, and then every time there's a squad announcement, you always get people going, well, he shouldn't be in because he's not playing for his team and he's been playing really badly. And then he explains the decisions why. And it's basically like he's never put a foot wrong in an England shirt. So I can sort of see his argument. And they don't really have much time now, do they? You can't go around making wholesale changes before the start of the World Cup and just throw people in. So I can see him just sticking with his favourites. I think England managers have eras, they come in and they're, it's let's refresh things, let's get new players in. Then they hit a kind of good point where they've got a team that's playing well. 
And then they get to sort of the end point where it's like they're kind of over, over loyal, like you were saying. In what you're saying, you're coming to the end of the life cycle with the, yeah. the current Manager. successful England team. Yeah, I think so. It feels like the, you know, they discovered themselves in 2018. They progressed further than the England team has for a long time in 2021. But, you know, a year and a half on, it's kind of, it feels a little bit creaky. The form, obviously, as, it, as everyone knows, coming into this isn't great. There's still quite a few changes from that 2018 team, though. That had Deli Ali in it. That had Jesse Lingard playing a big yeah, part. Yeah. And, like, this will be Foden, Rice, yeah. Bellingham's first World Cup. Like, there are reasons to be really excited. There's just some key players in key positions who are really out of form. I think you've worried. got to go with form as well as who you trust. There are some players that just know how to do it in tournaments and know how to do it when it's clutch time and when it's time to really dig your heels in and, and sh uh, give a performance, they're able to do it. I think Southgate knows that, but I think he thinks that they can all do it. Mm. Um, and that is the issue. So I feel like there are some players that are flying and you can trust them. So I think Phil Foden will start because I think he trusts him and he knows he's just in phenomenal form. The Maguire one is the one where I think he's in, yeah, he's in poor form, if we're honest, but I think he we trusts him enough. playing. No. No time. No unless, unless, yeah. well, unless he's, well, he's training. Yeah. Yeah, so he's got something. He's only just gone back to enough. training as well because he's been injured. So it's the hot. He's it, how match fit is he? How confident is he? There's all these sorts of. I know there's a few yeah. more games. There's loads of things with him. I just think it's different if you've got loads and loads of alternatives. When you look at your alternatives and you think, can I trust you to do it? Sometimes you just go with a safer option. Southgate's first three names on the team sheet, obviously with a little bit of your own flair. Um, I am going to go with Mason Mount. <laughs> Shock. Harry Dix. Listen, I call, it as a, <laughs> I call it as I see it. I think he's important to the team as well. Um, I would also have Harry Kane and a fit Rhys James. OK, so two from Chelsea. Love that <laughs> start. Do you come over you? Uh, yes. Obviously, Kane's got to be in there. I'm surprised no one said Declan Rice yet as well, yeah. particularly with Calvin Phillips injured, who was really good for England uh, in 2021. Um, I think Declan Rice is crucial to the balance of that side. And he's, he's sort of gone under the radar this season as well. So Declan Rice, and then I've already talked about him, but, but John Stones as well at the back. I, I do think he's a really, really good centre-back. And England just looks so much better with him in the side. We've had two people not said... Jude Bellingham, yeah. yeah I'm Surely, Charlotte. Jude Bellingham, first one on the team sheet for me. I just think he's the potential for everyone to get excited about England. And so, yeah, definitely for him. Jordan Pickford, I know we spoke about him before, but I think he always plays well for England, key for them. And then, obviously, Harry Kane leading the line. So, they're my three. Uh, Foden and then Bellingham and Pickford, I think. I think that spine would be, would be good. I'm going to add another one in just for fun. Kieran Trippier as well, I think, starts. Yeah. Yeah. Where? 95% of the games. Well, Depends where we're, what we're playing. Yeah. So. He can play left back as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's but not I, joyous to see a right footed left back. No. In terms of England overall, we've kind of dissected the team now. What would a successful tournament for England look like this year? And where do we think they're going to finish? No England team has ever gone past the quarterfinals outside of Europe before. So that's the kind of the, the upper limit, the glass ceiling based on history. If they could come second in the group and they might play the Netherlands in the next round, it feels like quarterfinals would, would be kind of par, I think, for this team. And in terms of form as well, I'm going to put you on the spot here because this is what you do with all your mm. stats. Mm -hmm. They obviously lost six on the bounce. Isn't there a stat that says when they last did this, they got knocked out at quarters? Yeah. Or groups? Yeah. How far, how long ago was that? That was about 16 years ago, I think, so... Do you think they're as bad as they were then now? It's really hard to say. I mean, we're, we're basically heading into the most unusual World Cup anyone's ever seen, you know? Mm -hmm. It's slap bang in the middle of the season. And I think some, we don't, you know, there's going to be injuries that, that happen. We don't know how um, these teams are actually going to line up. Um, and it's also, you think England's group, it looks tricky in some respects, but... Wales haven't been great recently. The USA are on terrible form. Mm. So there's so many factors and, and it's so squashed together that we, I know this is like a massive cop-out, apologies, but I do think we kind of have to see the first couple of games and see how it pans out. Because think about it, it's the last World Cup. It, Harry Kane's last-minute winner, that changed the narrative for the whole group stage. If we'd have drawn that game, it's a very different tournament. So Duncan's not really giving us an answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Charlotte, I'll come to you on that. What does success look like in your opinion, for England, and where do you think they'll finish? I think if you look at, back at the last two tournaments, success has got to be them getting to the final and 
putting in a good performance in the final. I'm not saying, I don't, does anyone really expect them to go there and win it? I don't think they do. But if you're talking about what is success for this England team, having got to the final of the Euros and the semis of the, the last World Cup, you just think f- success is the final. But pers- I don't think they're going to get there. No, because you're to put a <laughs> because as a team, if you've done it before, you're meant to be able to build, obviously, on your past performances. But we've just been speaking about how maybe it's coming to the end of this successful England cycle here. But in terms of what Duncan said, the group might be a bit problematic. Do you see them losing their first match to Iran? And then USA, th- Wales... Are, it, no I think it would be a bit cowardly if we were scared of this group, to be honest. We could have ended up with a far worse one. Um, I'm more worried about the last 16 in the quarterfinals. I mean, if we finish second in our group, we'll likely play the Netherlands, as Duncan says. Then we'll play Argentina, if all goes to plan. And, you know, it never really does in the World Cup. There's always a surprise. And then I think if we win our group, we'll play probably Senegal and then France. So I can't really see us getting past the quarters. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, stranger things have happened. Like France are sort of in open revolt at the moment. There's a lot of injuries. Uh, Pogba supposedly used a witch doctor on Mbappe. Like, they're probably not in the best mood right now. Uh, and then Argentina <laughs> are a very weird side as well in, in major tournaments as well. Very fluctuating form. So stranger things have happened. But at the moment, I can't see us going past the quarters. I mean, there's been talk of them being probably four, four favourite at the World Cup this year. Yeah, uh, I think success, there is no success in, unless you win it. Ooh. I just literally, Fighting I just, yeah, I I no one really remembers the runner-up. Success is if you win it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, you two will actually definitely remember. All <laughs> um, I think you've got to take each game as it comes. It's, it's, not, it's a tricky group, but if we're being honest, England should win this group. Yeah, they should. Yeah. And we're being really pessimistic and really <laughs> careful about everything. And everyone's just like, oh, maybe we'll get to the quarters. No, you should, you should top this group. And you should probably beat the next team as well. England are good enough on their day to beat absolutely anybody except for Brazil. So they're going to lose Brazil? Yeah, so right. just avoid <laughs> Brazil. That's it, avoid Brazil. That's it. That's the, just need to get uh, someone else and not Brazil. Out. And avoid, uh, avoid Brazil, avoid Germany. And I think you've got a chance at winning this. Well, I think it's an Love ambitious it. chat. You thinking you have to win. Again, Charlotte, you were saying... Final, Duncan doesn't give an answer, well, and they're getting knocked out of the quarter, well, so we... You know. I can't give an answer because I'm reliant on, a, on the Opta supercomputer, yes. which does actually make <laughs> England fifth favourites. Someone said they weren't going to yeah. get out of the group. They're Who getting out of the groups. We shouldn't be England Who fans if it? we say they're not <laughs> getting out of the groups. England are going to win. They'll, I think they'll win the group. Yeah. yeah. But to your point... World Cups never go how you think they do. And remember 2014 when it was England and Italy who didn't go through in the group when Uruguay and Costa Rica did. So now I don't think that'll be this group, but there will be one group that's like that. Always is. Always the dark sheep of the tournament. We'll have to wait and see who that is this year.